uh, Brazil. We react to some of the top headlines going on in the soccer world. First of all, this actually came out yesterday. I wasn't able to uh, cover it yesterday. But uh, Man United came out, or not came out, they didn't really say this, but like sources report that Man United are expecting Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood to be at a preseason. Um, they expect both of them to report back to training, if, you know, assuming they have not left the club by the start of preseason, which is set to start on July 8th for them. For all the players that are not playing in the European Championship or Copa America, players are expected to report back to um, Carrington on July 8th. Um, now, the club are working to find uh, Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood new clubs. That's all that you know. That's always been the case, but you know there is a potential chance that they will um, remain as United players by the deadline, which comes, and then if that's the case, you know they will be expected back in training. Greenwood, you know, he's, it's been reported that Lazio, Juventus, Napoli, and Marseille want, all want him. This will be the first time that he'll be training since uh, Manchester United since two thousand and twenty-two. Um, the beginning of 2022, uh, January 2022, prior the, the the suspension following that he was uh, following the fact that he was arrested on um, you know the attempted sexual assault and uh, the controlling and coercive behavior and assault. Now the case ended up being dropped a year later for Mason Greenwood, and he, he was able to restart his career when he was sent on loan to Getafe last season. Which had, he had a half decent season, suffered a lot of abuse at Getafe, um, but uh, uh, but he did have a half decent season. Now the twenty four year old, uh, I mean, well, not twenty four year old, but uh, yeah, it's clear that United uh, they're not going to continue with the Greenwood because of those issues. So you know they're going to look as a way to get him out as soon as they can. Now, Jaden Sancho, that one is a little bit more unique one in the fact that this is a player that is a United player that was signed here. No off-the-field baggage, none of that. Just, you know, not being able to replicate the form that he has at Dortmund at Manchester United, then going being sent back to Dortmund where he started on a team that went to the final. Actually had a decent second after the season, especially that game against PSG. Never showed a performance to that level at United. Um, the 24-year-old... Who, you know, as I said, he spent his last season at loan at Borussia Dortmund. He has actually not trained with United despite being on the squad um, since he fell out with Ten Hag in September. And he stayed on the team till January. He, you can't be loaned out in the middle of the season, but he still did not train with them. Uh, you know, there are sources that say that Sancho has been offered to Barcelona and Juventus, but United want a, around $40 million for him, which is... You know, which they're not gonna get at Jaden Sancho at this point in age, especially with teams knowing, especially you know, with the fact that United are having to offer him up, you know, is a, a you know, kind of diminishes his value. Now United, they're gonna try to uh, get these two out of there by uh, the trick by the deadline, uh, the January deadline. I don't think they will, uh, but. Um, they're gonna try to get it done, and it's interesting. It's interesting to see how the situation goes. Um, yeah, Antoine Griezmann. There's potential talks about him not having a diminished role at the European Championship going forward for France. You look, France. They were played a main starting lineup against um, against Poland, and. And they, they went with their first team, you know, Upamecano, Saliba, Tio Hernandez, Joel Conde, Chouameni, Kante, Rabiot, Dembele, Mbappe. But there was no Griezmann that was not in this game. Instead, it was Bradley, uh, Bradley, Bradley Barcola. And it's interesting because at first, uh, you know, first I'm trying to think, whoa, inter what is going on here? Then maybe you're saying, oh, he's just giving the older guys, or one of the older guys rest. But N'Golo Kante is still playing in this game. Um, who happens to be of the similar age range of Griezmann. So you're thinking, you know, that is Antoine Griezmann, you know, is this a sign of things to come? Has he been disappointed in Griezmann's performance for um, for France at this European Championship? He did miss a few opportunities in that Netherlands game, uh, in both games, honestly. Um, 
two huge missed opportunities in that nil nil draw against the Netherlands. And it's clear, you know, the way the Champs plays, the way France play under the Champs is clear. They need somebody that's clinical because they're they're not a team that creates a boatload of opportunities that completely dominate a game. They're a team that wins on moments. Um, but the, and and he's been a, 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 a and he has had a goal drought for France. He scored only two. Uh, uh, of his la- in, in the last 30 games that he's played for France, he's only scored in two games, um, which is you know not not a good form at all. It's a huge goal drought that he has with France. Uh, but um, yeah, it's interesting to see whether or not he will be in that starting lineup as they take on Belgium. Um, Griezmann did come out. Uh, did come out in uh, in a presser. Saying that, uh, not he didn't come out in the presser, but in a report that came from Le- Lekeep, he uh, it was sh- you know he was irked. That was the word used, irked about the decision, um, and um, that he was a little bit dis- that he was disappointed and frustrated by the choice, which really kind of proves to me that this is not a resting situation, that this is one of Deschamps' choice. Um, he also said he doesn't believe that he's suffering physically from the amount of games and that he didn't need to be rested. Uh, that's what it's like reports are saying from Lekeep. But um, but yeah, it's just an interesting situation um, uh, that Deschamps has. You know, he really does trust his players. He really does have faith in the guys that... Um, that has done it for him, you know, when you look at his reluctancy to go to Saliba uh, until up to this European Championship, how reluctant he is, has been. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. I'll be very interested to see if he's starting against Belgium. The U.S. Soccer Federation has came down and condemned to racist abuse going against the players after... Um, after the loss to Panama, you saw Florin Balogun, what he uh, what he uh, posted, uh, some nasty, evil comments from some so-called fans. Um, you know, I'm, I haven't, you know, you know, where he's also been a target um, of abuse because of that red card um, and other members and. You know, the U.S. Soccer Federation came out in a statement saying it was deeply disrupted with the racist comments made online. Um, you know, it's really unacceptable this day and age what we're, what's going on. You know, the U.S. Soccer Federation also came out and said there's also absolutely no place in the game for such hateful and discriminatory, discriminatory behavior. These actions are not only unacceptable, but also contrary to the values of respect and inclusivity inclusivity that we uphold as an organization or um, the USF said they will also offer mental health services to any player or staff member that requests it. There's also um, a governing body um, of the Copa America Conambul that they have reported that this abuse to which I don't know it's interesting the fact that you know what can Colombo do? This is a this is a Concacaf federation. Um, how are they can really address racist fans that are racist U.S. fans? I don't understand that. You know what can Colombo do? What sanctions do you want them to do? I don't really understand that. But um, they did it reported. Um, Colombo also came out in a statement saying. Our organization works continuously towards the evaluation of a new culture that eradicates expression of racism, offensive content on social media, and all forms of violence or discrimination. We condemn attitudes of intolerance in every place and on every occasion, especially those hiding behind social media account uh, accounts. Uh, look, you know, racist abuse should never uh, should never occur. It's really sad. And disrupting that we're at this point in time. Um, this is not a U.S. soccer fan issue. This is just a global issue. You know, there's the same issues going on in the Europe. 
and it's something that you know education needs to increase and um so that uh so this kind of things don't continue to happen thank you for tuning into the GSMC soccer podcast brought to you by the GSMC sports network we have a great show for um uh Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Soccer Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, make sure you like and follow the show. Um, please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content updates. Thank you once again and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.